My formative years are in Jamaica, so I've had the privilege of not having to think about the white man every day. I've had the privilege of not having to think about the white man every day. They not like us. They not like us. Guys, how you guys doing? Good evening. Another day, another tether. Talking out the side of their mouth. Yeah, I came across this clip and I wanted to share it with you guys because day after day as always, we always have some ungrateful immigrant sitting in America talking about how they don't see race, racism and oppression wasn't an issue for them in their country and they tired of coming to America, hearing black Americans talk about racism and oppression all the time because they had the privilege of not dealing with that. So when I seen this clip, I really just stopped the video and thought to myself like, yeah, Jamaicans can't be this ignorant, but it's no surprise to me because a lot of these immigrants are very unintelligent they lack common sense and critical thinking skills and listen to this video because i put videos on about jamaicans again and this is how a lot of these immigrants think it is no reason marcus garvey got the fuck away from them and ran away from them them coons because when i'm looking and i'm sitting here and i'm like sweetie we can do a quick google search and see how y'all living but when you hear an immigrant who had to leave her country to America, talk about how she's tired of hearing black Americans talk about race and why is it so much focus on blackness and she doesn't see it and she had a privilege in her country. That's when you have to pull out receipts and make them look stupid. But you guys, I'm gonna play this whole clip, then I'm gonna come back with another part of my commentary. I've ne listen, I've never been more aware of my blackness until coming to America. Mm. Every little box I'm checking, black or it's like it's it's never uh, been that that big a deal. Like applications. Yes, stuff. all the time. Like somebody would compliment, it would say, "Oh my goodness, your hair is like that," and I say, "Oh, thank you so much." And then somebody would be like, "Yo, that was not a compliment." I was like, "Oh, oh." My formative years are in Jamaica, so that's how I kind of it frames how I see the world. And and as a Jamaican, I do understand that my lack of sensitivity sometimes comes across as ignorant, but it's just I've had the privilege of not having to think about the white man every day. We should be able to use our beaches. We are a beach community. We are beach people. We are a small island surrounded by water. Jamaicans can no longer access their own beaches. This is where they work. Say so they don't have a, a other job. They don't have nothing else to turn to. Tourists can pay for exclusive access to beaches at all-inclusive resorts. But everyday Jamaicans are increasingly being blocked out of them. When you push a fisherman from a beach, where did you want him to go? We are living in between waters and we have no access to a beach. Some Jamaicans are organizing to take down the colonial era land laws that still affect them today. Jamaican came into emancipation landless and homeless. And that problem has not changed in Jamaica. And they're suing companies for cutting off their access to the beaches. And we also will not stop until the entire Jamaican public is able to access the beach freely. Right now, in Jamaica, if you're not bleaching, you're not saying nothing, because bleaching turn up the thing. So when you bleach, America look more nicer, look more sexier, and look more cuter than you was. Do you bleach? Yeah. Yeah? When did you start? I'm going to start. We start about two years about now. Some people would say they want to look like Beyonce or what you call that Nicki Minaj. Or, I want to look like Nicki Minaj. And Do you ever think about it and just wish that it was different and that it was the trend was to be black? The only difference I wish you had in it was if it could happen faster without damaging your skin. Show me what you do. I um this. This is bio cream. Now this is Jamaica's baby in bleach. <laughs> Nerpy song. And this now, this is for your hair. But girls have found out that this volume 40 is like one of the big things that just brings up the cream. Gives you that, first it gives you that reddish look and then it just takes it off. Beautiful. But after a while, you have to just cool off and come back again because your skin will get way too thin. If you get a cut, it will never heal. After a while, this area will burst. And when it bursts, the vein is more obvious. What do you think would happen if I used it? If you 
<laughs> no, I don't think you will have skin left. Some of the girls that do this think that, hey, if I do this long enough, I'll become white. But you never actually get white. After you get brown, you get pink. So you do it once in the morning and once in the night before you go to bed. There's some people now that do it three times a day. This is the way I do it, right? Okay. First thing you get is the warmth of it. Shall I try? It won't hurt you. Definitely a little bit warm. Yeah. So we're gonna take the glad wrap. I mean I gotta wrap it on my skin. The heat is unbearable, right? Yeah. So you would go out with this under your clothes? Yeah. All day. You would go out, yeah. Some girls get stockings and pull it up over it. They would get tights and pull it up over it. And probably get jeans. So it would be the heat of the like a global warming type of thing happening here. But if you have a boyfriend already, doesn't it interfere with your sex life? <laughs> he doesn't get any. <laughs> when I was called to the bar, barristers, so you still have to wear wigs in the court. And these wigs here, one of them was a wig. But I was called to the bar in England, which is my father's wig, which is from 1934. I used to have to wear, this was my wig, which was 1963. And I'm not sure about this one, but I have it. And as a symbol of our need to stand on our own and get out of the Privy Council, I'm going to sacrifice them all right y'all y'all seeing those clips and that doesn't even tip the scale of the stuff that jamaicans been dealing with for multiple generations and the fact that she would get on here and talk about how she have a privilege because she don't see race and she don't think about the white man you know these people are so subjugated and they can't even see it and it's so crazy because black americans live better than any blacks in a diaspora. That's a fact. We live in million dollar homes. We live in good neighborhoods. Some of us live in the hood, live in the projects, but we still have access to running water. Basic needs, right? So our concerns and poverty is different from that poverty. And we can see that we're subjugated. Millionaires can see that we subjugated. We can see that we subjugated and have a system working against us and white supremacy is in our face. And we don't deny it. But the fact that these people will be living in slum, the fact that these people will be trying to bleach themselves with these crazy chemicals, the fact that these people, people can't even access their own beaches and don't run their own uh, resorts or, or make money off their own island, they can't see racism. They can't think about the white man. The fact that these people are still wearing colonial wigs, looking like a plum fool, they can't see and think about white people. This is the problem with immigrants. They don't see what's in front of them. Again, as I said before, they lack critical thinking skills. They don't have common sense. And this is, this is why we can see why their countries are in the state that they are, why they never amount to nothing, why they never fall for nothing, and why they are going to constantly be in the state that they're in. Because you have to be delusional to not to see the white supremacy, the oppression, and what's working against you. If you have to leave your country to go to another country to get basic needs, then there's a problem with the white man. And, and it's crazy that they don't see it. And it's like, oh my gosh. But I want to go into this again. Because again, these people are very ignorant. You know, Afro-descendant people are the majority in Jamaica. Yet and still... All of the richest people in Jamaica, the richest person in Jamaica is not a black Afro Jamaican. It's some white man, Asian man. And I'm going to go through this list because as you can see, it's not them. You have some Marley's and you have Usain Bolt. But for her to say she can't think about a white man, baby, the white man is the richest man in your country. But you are the culture. When people think about Jamaica, they think about the black Jamaicans, the melanated Jamaicans, the reggae Jamaicans, the culture. They don't think about white people, Asian people. At least I don't. But the fact is, you're not seeing a white man, but the white man is the richest man in your country. 
is so delusional and this is why these people like a fool and this is why every time they open their mouth black americans we always have to drop them down a notch because you guys you've seen all over this internet all over social media, they try to take shots at us and think they got a one up on us because they sit in our country talking shit about us. And I'm looking at you Jamaicans like you look stupid because as as black Americans, we can be arrogant and say that we're privileged because technically we are the most privileged black people. We are the most successful black Americans, the most educated, the most influential and the most known black people. We can say that we're privileged and we don't even go there. And we are in that position because we have enough common sense to know that there's a system that works against us. There's a system that's going to always try to have that foot in our neck. And if we can see it as the most quote unquote privileged black people, black Americans, how come you as a third world poverty slum person can't see it? And that's no shade because I'm like, we've been to Jamaica. We know Jamaicans trying to run up out of there every chance they get. That's why y'all here almost in the millions. When your people is relocated in other countries in the almost a millions, baby girl, you ain't privileged. Like, and, and this is the thing. Thing, and, and, and this is the thing that frustrates a lot of black Americans and why we are the leaders of the diaspora, why we do get the farthest when it comes to fighting back against the system and diaspora, because these people are complete idiots and, and just fools that the, the 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 lack of critical thinking and, and common sense to look at your judges. I can't imagine. Right. Because, you know, black Americans, we're very vocal and ignorant. Can you imagine us going up into the courtroom and you got a Negro step there with a colonial wig on? And we ain't even the majority in America. We are minority in America. And we ain't put no goddamn colonial wigs on. We will, first of all, we not going to have it because we, we have respect and dignity for ourselves. But the fact that y'all be going up in a court system where you're the majority of the population and you looking at your judge with this goddamn white colonial wig. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. It's straight buffoonery and clownery and jamaica is not the only country you got barbados you got so many of these caribbean countries not to mention the african countries y'all sitting up there with these these hundred thousand dollar horse head colonial wigs don't talk about racism doesn't exist we're not oppressed black americans need to stop complaining and you looking at them like really <laughs> you are a laughing you guys are a joke this is why you people can never be leaders. Never be leaders. Black Americans, if you ever think these people should be leaders, you are crazy. And the fact that we let these people in leadership positions in our country over us was one of the biggest mistakes and why we have so many problems. You are looking at a people that are so tone deaf and can't see their own white supremacy in their country and the reason why they had to flee to America to think that they're going to get in Congress and lead us. I mean, it's, it's craziness. I told you guys before, I don't take advice from no immigrant. I don't take advice from anybody. We don't even take advice from other black Americans in our community or anything. So why the hell would I take advice from a third worlder who people still sitting down there in poverty slum in 2024? You the majority, but you can't walk on your own beach. I mean, one guy in the video said he makes about $4,000 a day in Jamaica. That's $25 US dollars. Baby, let me tell you something. Y'all are really subjugated down there and y'all created hip hop. Get the hell out of here. I mean, it, it's so it's so much nonsense. And it's so embarrassing when you watch it. You guys are bleaching your skin. You ain't worried about the white man. Y'all are the majority. But yet and still, you want to bleach your skin. Why is it that black Americans who have been in America, the minority around white people our whole life, and we have more pride in y'all to raise our fists and say, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. We wear our afros. Let your soul glow. Like, we have more pride in who we are as black people being in a system of white people who told us our looks are not good, our hair is nappy. We have embraced our blackness more than y'all, and we are a minority surrounded by white people, but yet y'all the majority in your country, and you're still bleaching your skin, and you talk about you don't see the white man? Yes, honey, you do see the white man. Y'all are mixing up chemicals 
that you're supposed to use on your hair and putting on your skin and wrapping yourself in saran wrap and hoping that you're going to get lighter. And the only thing you're doing is killing the dermis in your skin because you have that melanin to protect you from the sun, age spots, skin cancer, because you guys live in a warm climate. Black Americans, for the most part, don't live in a warm climate. So that's not our issue. But we don't skin bleach the way y'all do. We have a, we probably have some black people to do it, but not the way y'all other people do it, especially y'all in other countries. But you don't see whiteness as a problem. What privilege do you have? You guys live in this false reality to think because you're the majority in your country and because you don't have a white man specifically doing things to you guys or an, a system of white people that you can see doing stuff that you guys are believing that you live in good. You're not. You're not. Black Americans have black Americans in power and know that we're still being subjugated. We can see right through that. Y'all can't see through what y'all had. Africans suffer from this too. Y'all say racism don't exist. Stop complaining about racism. If we took advice from y'all, black Americans would still be in segregation. Black Americans would still be on a plantation. Y'all talk about we have a victim mentality. You guys are so messed up and it's sad. And I bring these things to you guys so black Americans can see exactly who we dealing with. We're dealing with a group of people who are so far gone. They know nothing about liberation. Do not care about liberation. They are completely comfortable being subjugated. And they wish to probably think that we were still subjugated. But we want more for ourselves. Black Americans, our people today, we still fighting the system. And we live Way better than anybody in the diaspora. That's a fact. That's why y'all in our community. That's why y'all all up in Maryland. All up in uh, D.C., Philly. That's why y'all run us, living with us, because we live good. No matter what status we at in America, we live good. That's why y'all all up in our ass. Because y'all can't do that in your own home countries. You have to be really, really embarrassed in yourself and ashamed to be able to be 90, what it says, 92% of the population is of African or Afro-Jamaican descent. And the majority of y'all live in a slum. Y'all don't own and control none of the resorts. And now you're fighting to get on beaches that, that belong to you guys. My only with that, you had a whole Asian woman talk about you ain't Jamaican. My fellow Jamaicans, me come for drink milk, but me day I come cold. It is abundantly clear to me that there are people who live a foreign and identify as Jamaicans, but you don't have one of these. And while you're entitled to your opinion, one is a set a rascal does. So let me set the record straight. Number one, Jamaica is not an African nation. It's not a black country. We identify as an ethnically diverse society. People, please just stop it. Out of many, one people, Jamaicans. We do not hyphenate and we do not encourage separation by race. Number two, this one's mine. This is my granny own. This one is my mom's and this is grandpa. Yeah, it's, it, it's hardcover. Grandpa died a long time ago. If you are planning a trip to Jamaica and you don't own one of these, you're going to have to book a return flight from where you came. These are the rules. I'm just laying it down for you. If you go to Jamaica and you don't have one of these, immigration will stamp your passport and give you a set amount of time that you are allowed to stay in Jamaica. And if you overstay, you're welcome. We put you back on a plane and we send you back, you, not me, you back to the country from which you came. I mean, Y'all have so much going on in these countries. This is why I never understood why y'all be coming over here running y'all mouth about us. Y'all got so much going on in y'all homeland. What I think what y'all do is talk about black Americans to distract from the shit going on in your own homeland because you're too averse to address it. But we're going to pull receipts. But I digress. Anyway, you guys, I hope you looked at this video 
I hope you start understanding where these immigrants are coming from and why the 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 urgency to delineate from these people because they are dangerous and they are detrimental to our community. I mean, the sheer delusion. It's like you're looking at them like it's no wonder people is kicking you off your own beaches. It's no wonder you living in shanty towns and shacks. It's like it's almost like y'all in the diaspora. I don't know. Maybe it's just because black Americans has been in America with this beast for so many decades and centuries that we understand. But y'all are so docile and, and just clueless that you just mosey on down and you just tolerate this. Y'all should be tan up that fucking place. How dare you not let me on the beach? And the crazy thing is, because, you know, I discussed going to Jamaica a few times within the last year or so, and I had no problem accessing the beaches. <laughs> so, I mean, they said it's for tourists anyway. So, you know, we get to come down there, enjoy your beaches, and you can't. Ain't that some shit? That really should make you mad. So, I want you guys to look at this video. I want you guys to really dissect what she's saying. I really want you guys to really look at these immigrants and just really start paying attention to who we are letting in our spaces and who we are allowing into leadership positions. Because as we start to really see all the people that's talking, like we had the last video of the guys talking about he's against reparations, we are electing these people in too many positions of leadership in our country. And we see why a lot of things are failing because these people don't have a leadership quality. They don't have a leadership bone in their body. And there's no disrespect to them. They just don't have it. They don't have that black American warrior spirit like we do where we just don't, we're going to idly sit by. If we thought like these Jamaicans or any other immigrant, we would not be where we are today. If we thought like them, we're still be in basically in Jim Crow. If if Dr. King had a Jamaican mindset the way they are, we'll be in Jim Crow. If our grandparents didn't have enough common sense to say, I don't fucking want this life, we're going to fight. If we didn't fight, if you look over our history of the, the fight before even civil rights, how we stood up. You, we would still be subjugated. It is scary to think that these people still think like this. And I am so glad that I'm black American because for real, who the hell wants to be anybody in the diaspora from the continent to the Caribbean? You guys are so docile. You're so weak and conquered. And I honestly want y'all to stay the hell away from black Americans in a hell out of leadership roles because y'all don't have a leadership bone in y'all body. I think Marcus Garvey was probably the only leadership you guys had and y'all done ran him the fuck up out of Jamaica. Now I see why he had to bring his ass over to America and holla at black Americans. Cause you niggas been cooning since y'all been off them sugar plantations in Jamaica. Either half of y'all done fled over here and co-opted our identity. Some of you first and second generation Jamaicans, y'all ain't tough. Or y'all have brought crime with your drug smuggling from the shower posse. Y'all are a mess. I would hate to divulge into the history of these other Caribbean islands. Because y'all are just the worst. But anyway, you guys. Tell me what you think. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. If you get mad. Even if you yes, get offended. Ma so, what you gonna do? Because I guarantee you, you can be.